It's a midweek matinee session at the New Empire Cinema in suburban Bombay. And once again, Indian cinema is showing itself to be an awesome drawcard. Not a fan tale in sight, not even popcorn. They're here for the movie, a melodrama, and they're here in droves. Nowhere else in the world is there a bigger movie audience, ticketing a $2.3 billion box office. And nowhere else is there more prolific film production. Bollywood knocks out its song and dance epics quicker than you can say Amitabh Bachchan. He's India's most adored screen idol. Overall, it's thought about 27,000 films have been produced in India since pioneer Harish Chandra Bhattvadeka debuted his shorts in this part of the world in 1899. Do the sums, and that adds up to an extraordinary annual output. It all has to come from somewhere, and one man's hoping that somewhere is here. Smack bang in the middle of nowhere. I believe that this is a very viable project, and it will work. You've never doubted it? I have not doubted it. LA has Hollywood, Bombay has Bollywood, and now Hyderabad has its film city. I want the whole world to come and then do their work here. That is what I am. I have built this firm. Uh, Ramati Rao's a tiny, reclusive man with a big dream and deep pockets. A kind of Indian Rupert Murdoch turned Walt Disney, he made a fortune in media and just about everything else you can imagine. Now he's ploughing that cash into this enormous film facility on the outskirts of Hyderabad. How do you feel when you look out? On this uh, vast it's a sat satisfying experience. I feel I look forward uh, that uh, this is going to be a historical place, a world film production center. It will become famous uh, while I am uh, around and after me. How much more still needs to be done? Maybe forever. <clears throat> because for a creative thing, there is nothing like the end. It will go on, you know, we keep on changing things, we keep on adding things. And I would never say that uh, this can be said complete. It's all here, and if it isn't, it's on the way. There's the international terminal ready-made for your airport disaster flick. There's the hospital, if the script calls for something unexpected and terminal for a key character. There's the frontier fort for a western shoot-em-up with cowboys and, well, Indians. There's the quiet suburban middle American cul-de-sac. Okay, silence. And out the back, there's the pool and the gang from the mini series Hot Hot Stuff. By the way, you have a key cut? Is it all? No, what cut? May I have some? Oh, sure, sure. Cut it! Hot Hot Stuff is one end of the production schedule at Film City, the cheap, cheap end. Down here in made for regional television drama land, the actors complain. They complain about the pay being too small. So Bengali television is really the poor cousin? It's really the poor cousin, poor second cousin. We are uh, not getting enough funding. The amount of money that I get uh, doing a Bengali serial is chicken feed as compared to what the others get in uh, the other languages. And we are the chicken feeds or the chicken feeds. Hot Hot Stuff is a knock-it-out, knock-about regional series that makes Neighbours look like an art house production. In many ways, it's out of place in this grand venue. This place was built with uh, the mainstream cinema in mind. It's difficult to do a very realistic, typical 
Indian cinemas, realistic cinema. It's, it's meant for big budget commercial films, it's meant for that. Up the road and up the budget scale of rupee or two million, all they can do is smile and sing and dance. Nothing down at heel about the production or the title. The Gods is a grand Telugu language tale of jealousy and redemption bound for release in the South. The actors aren't high-end Hindi stars from the Bollywood marquee. The language makes this off, off Bollywood. Still, the pay and conditions are okay. You won't find any serial television gripes here, except perhaps that being an acting god isn't what it used to be. Initially, they were treated like gods, and, uh, because they used to stay in studios, and the shootings to happen only indoors, and to see an actor would be like, ah, that's an actor there. You know, this. But now it's like, Every Tom, Dick and Harry is an actor or some film personality. Budget-wise, The Gods is a big screen mid-ranger. And while the cast and crew enjoy the one-stop self-contained facilities here at Film City, it's not as cost-effective as they'd like. So I keep telling these Film City people, if they can somehow bring down, cut down on the cost, there would be about 100 shootings happening here. But if, if they bring down the price, then every place would be full. It seems the only person not complaining about the costs at Film City is the boss. And why would he? He's rich and getting richer. It's, I think, a state of mind. You know, where, where you are rich, when you are rich, you do not know. You can always be poor and you can always be rich. And I, I believe I am rich. So rich, Ramaji Rao just keeps building building a home for Indian film production, casting plastic and plaster illusion throughout his 900 hectare site. Oh, and building a home for himself. If, it, if you feel that you require a full central air conditioning, we can do that, but no. I feel that is... Uh, Surely nothing understated, a rival to Gone with the Wind's Tara, or something more media mogul like Citizen Kane Xanadu, high on a hill overlooking his dreamland. I, I, I feel uh, that uh, you know a man's uh, requirement is not uh, two square meals and uh, and uh, some comforts etc. A man's uh, real comfort is how relevant he is to the society around him, how much happiness he has been able to spread to the rest of the society. So that's how I measure myself. And the film spread happiness? Yes. Why not? Because as long as uh, you know, they give, they, they make them laugh, they make them cry. <laughs> Films can uh, revolutionize also. I had uh, seen it uh, in my own experience. Here, social revolutions it can be. It all depends on how we put them to use. <laughs> Navaprema, Navila, 